Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in for another digital art lesson. Again, my name is Ben Dumas and I'm one of the art teachers at Clarendon Elementary. Let's get started this week. We're gonna talk about artist Giuseppe Archimboldo. And in a couple minutes here, we're gonna talk about why I am surrounded by an overwhelming amount of plants and fruits and vegetables, and flowers. Let's talk about first what we're gonna need for today's lesson. All right, so for today's lesson, you are going to need a pencil with an eraser to sketch out your beautiful ideas. You're going to need a sketchbook or a piece of paper to sketch them on. And you're also going to need some colored pencils, would probably be the best thing to use since you can get a fine tip on them and you can get lots of detail with colored pencil, but you could use whatever you'd like to add color to today's project. All right, so let's talk about the artist Giuseppe Archimboldo just a little bit before we get started on today's project. So Archimboldo was born in the Italian city of Milan in 1527, and he passed away in 1593. So the artworks that we're going to be looking at today, the beautiful, bizarre portraits that he made, were painted somewhere around 400 and 500 years ago. Okay, so they were painted somewhere in the mid 1500s, all right? So let's take a look at why I have all of this fruit and plants and nature behind me. Well, that's because Archimboldo composed his portraits up entirely of, you guessed it, plants, fruits, vegetables, all these things that you would find out in nature. Now, he also did some of that were composed of animals and even sea creatures, but the ones that we're going to look at today we're going to be using fruits and vegetables to compose our Archimboldo inspired portraits, okay? So let's take a look at something else that he did. Now, I wanna ask, was there a lot of artists in the 1500s composing portraits of entirely made up out of flowers, vegetables, no, there was not. He was one of the only ones or the only one that was doing it. And that is what made him different and set him aside from some of the other artists or all of the other artists at that time. Now, he also invented this. And I say invented because no one had ever done this before. He invented that style of portraiture. Now, let's take a look at this still life that he did. Now, when he painted this, still lifes were not very popular. They didn't really become popular until the 17th century, okay? So these were done way before still lifes were even very popular in the art world. Now, what makes them very interesting and bizarre and different is that they're not only still lifes, but when you turn them upside down, they're called reversibles because it reverses into a portrait of a face. And you all can see that, the cheeks here and the nose. And I love this idea of taking something like a still life, like a basket of fruit, and reversing it into something else. Now again, no one had ever done this before. Archimboldo was the first to ever do this, so he invented this as well. Let's take a look at this one that he did. Of a, bass, of a bowl, excuse me, of root vegetables. And if you turn it upside down, you all can maybe already see that, it turns into a portrait. So before we get started, I wanna take a look at one of his most famous paintings that he painted in 1591. This is titled Vortumnus. It is supposed to be a portrait of the god of harvest. And as you can see, it is composed entirely of fruits, vegetables, flowers and painted way, way ahead of its time. No one had even thought of composing portraits together entirely up out of fruits and vegetables. So one more thing that I want to mention about Archimboldo's work is that it is so, so detailed in the amount of detail that he put in every piece of fruit or every vegetable, every grain that he painted. It is incredible with the amount of detail. I even signed his name here, if you could see there. In the grain, he signed his name on the painting. Very, very creative. All right, so one last thing I wanted to add about Archimboldo's work that I thought was important to bring up 
was that because they were painted so long ago, before stand-up comedy or movies that make us laugh, they were done as a source of amusement. So they were made for his audience to laugh. And that is one reason why he did all of these very bizarre and different paintings, was to make people laugh. And it wasn't until hundreds of years later when artists like Rene Magritte and Salvador Dali really saw his work as important and created the surrealism movement where they really loved the idea of dreams and surreal and bizarre works that look like Archimboldo's portraits. All right, so now we can take all of that knowledge about Archimboldo, all of those beautiful portraits that he did that we looked at, and we can use them as a source of inspiration to create our own Archimboldo portraits. Now, it does not have to be a self-portrait. I had a lot of fun doing mine. It is not a portrait of myself. And you will see that I have composed a face out of entirely fruits and vegetables and flowers. Now I started with the pear for the nose, and then I just kept working around that, and I put the lemons in and the garlic for the eyes. Make sure that you add lots of detail and you can add lots of foliage and vines and leaves coming off of whatever it is that you're drawing. Archimboldo was sure, again, like I said, to add all of that detail. So if you're doing, say, an onion, you might want to add all those little dried roots that come off the bottom of an onion. I hope you all have so much fun creating your imaginative Archimboldo portraits, and I can't wait to see what you all come up with. I'll see you next week.